Yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome back to another episode of Crypto and the Caribbean, the show where we discuss all things crypto and Caribbean related. Now, for those of you who don't know, or you may have missed it, Crypto Bahamas was this week. It was a four day crypto conference co hosted by FTX and Salt at the Bahama Resort in Nassau, Bahamas. Well, Technically, it was three days. The first day was more so just registration, mingling, and networking. Now, while the conference itself had the typical format that you find at these crypto conferences, you know, multiple stages, a bunch of different kinds of panelists, as many topics as you could fit in the time slots. So while it had this typical format and the focus wasn't entirely on the Bahamas, in this video, I'm gonna focus particularly on the points that were relevant to the Bahamas and its immediate region in the Caribbean. So let's get straight to it. So earlier this week, droves of people hopped on a plane and beelined it straight for the sun, sand and sea of Nassau, Bahamas. And I know some of you may be wondering, well, who all showed up? How many people were at this event? Let me tell you this. If you just guess a random name from any sort of crypto related media that you have seen or any conference that you may have gone to over the past month to two months, you're probably going to guess right. I'm talking Bitcoin devs, altcoin teams like Solana, Algorand, Nair, DeFi specialists, NFT specialists. GameFi devs, experts in economics, finance, and business, VCs, politicians, athletes, artists. You get the gist right now. You get the point, right? It, it was a lot of people. And I know we keep hearing this claim about being the world's best hub for digital assets or crypto or Web3 or whatever buzzword it was they chose to use to advertise themselves. We've been hearing a lot of this from many countries over the past year. So what sets the Bahamas apart from the rest? One word, regulation. Now, if you haven't seen it already, last week the Bahamas released its official policy white paper, and I dropped an episode covering the entire document, highlighting the main six themes that I drew from it. Those six being openness, speed, adaptability, forethought, reputation, and Bahamian accessibility. And sure enough, I was able to pick up on some of these themes throughout the conference, especially the parts directly referencing the Bahamas. But before we dive into the Bahamian Caribbean focus section of this, let's talk a bit about the conference as a whole. The future is happening whether you like it or not, no matter what your opinion is of cryptocurrency or the blockchain. Nothing is ever certain in life and things are far less certain in a, a young and quickly growing and changing industry. But I think that it could help reshape our global ecosystem in a lot of ways. This is going to be one of the leading countries for crypto in the world. This space, this environment, is going to be a catalyst for doing more, for inspiring more. Listen, I love these FTX guys. They are visionaries. They are thinking about the world of finance the way they want it to be, not the way it is today. This uh, Crypto Bahamas conference is one of the first, if not the first, which combines together the traditional financial world with the cryptocurrency ecosystem. You're gonna see a very unique mix of high profile thought leaders, really movers and shakers coming together here in the Bahamas for this event. What we're trying to do is grow the community of people investing in crypto, using cryptocurrencies, understanding of what ultimately will be a revolution in finance. I think this will be the most unique crypto events of, of the year. The opportunities and the upside are enormous here. And I bet there'll be more than one person that leaves Crypto Bahamas with that eureka moment that says, oh my God, I understand what is happening and I want to be a part of it. So as some of you may know, earlier this month, I attended Bitcoin 2022 in Miami. 
Now, I wasn't able to attend Crypto Bahamas, unfortunately, so I had to settle for live streaming it. But I have to say, at least surface level, the Crypto Bahamas conference honestly felt like someone went to the Bitcoin conference and said, let's do a mini scale version of this, but in the Bahamas, which isn't a bad thing at all. It's actually a good thing. The format was good quality information was shared. And if it was your first conference, you definitely left with a great impression. All in all, watching this conference felt like watching every other conference that I saw this month. And that's not to say it's bad. That's to say that it, for the first Crypto Bahamas conference, for the first conference based in the Bahamas itself, it was an amazing show. Now on the first day of the conference, technically the second, but we'll call it the first, we had SBF or Sam Bankman Freed, CEO of the leading cryptocurrency exchange FTX, and we had the Mooch, Anthony Scaramucci, founder of Salt, AKA Skybridge Alternatives. And these two kicked off the festivities. So they were the first faces that you saw as the event started. Also, quick side note, do you remember me saying this a couple weeks ago? Valdez is running point. He's basically, they hired a Bahamian PR firm. This is, this is their, uh, Olivia Pope. That's it. This is their Olivia Pope. That's what I, that's what I was going for. Um, it's smart. I can't, I can't even lie. It's, it's, it's an excellent move and it's going to be great aesthetically. It's going to be a great front, um, for the business as they continue to move and develop in the Bahamas. Well, take a guess who was first to be welcomed on stage after the introductions. You guess? Super excited about that. I'm going to ask Valdez to come out. Uh, Valdez is a Bahamian citizen working with FTX. Uh, and it's so, hey. thank you. So, it's so proud of us to share the stage with you. And you're going to introduce the prime minister. Thank, thank you, Valdez. Good morning, everyone. Called it. So here, Valdez was laying the groundwork for what the audience members could expect from the panelists and some of the discussions that they were going to be having over the next three days. And he also left the audience with a sound piece of advice that I'm almost positive many foreigners have heard from a Bahamian at least one time. Try Guava Duff. And then later, he introduces Prime Minister Brave Davis, who with his anecdotal introduction, emphasize some of those same key themes that I mentioned earlier. Today, the arrival and presence of FTX underscores the readiness of the Bahamas to be a home for global leaders in the crypto space. Back in 2019, our central bank launched the Sand Dollar, the world's first digital currency. And just last week, my government launched a policy white paper outlining the future of digital assets in the Bahamas. This paper sets out our vision and the supporting framework to transform the Bahamas into the leading digital assets hub in the Caribbean and a global leader in the progressive regulation of businesses in this profoundly innovative space. The Bahamas is not only open and ready for business, but moving to the forefront of this most exciting era of digital asset innovation. In our policy white paper, you'll also note the commitment of my government to provide the highest in tertiary education to Bahamians who want to be in the fintech and cryptocurrency space. The Bahamas and Bahamians all across our archipelago are ready and willing to partner with you to do business in our great country. I hope that consideration of the potential and possibilities in our country will feature in your discussions over the next few days. As you know, change is certain. Progress is not. Likewise, I'm determined to make sure that in my country, this era of dramatic change is also an era of progress. And if the world of cryptocurrency is where you see your possibilities, then the Bahamas has a place for you. You are, ladies and gentlemen, most welcome to the Bahamas. So 
after the introductory sales pitch, the conference was officially underway. Now, I could sit here all day and break down each individual session that they had throughout the entire conference, but I'm not going to do that. I definitely don't have the time or the desire to do that right now. So what I have done is linked a video reference to each day and each stage down in the description for you. So you could go check it out if you're interested in any of the specific segments that they covered. I highly recommend too, if you haven't seen it and you're interested in the space, check it out, especially if you've never been to a conference before. This is a great introduction. But I mean, whatever your heart desires in the crypto space, there was a panel discussion for you. Now, if you've been to any other conferences this month, and trust me, there's been a lot. April had way too many conferences. But if you've been to any of those conferences or you've watched any of those previous conferences, chances are you're not really hearing anything new at Crypto Bahamas, anything really groundbreaking. More than likely, you heard most of what everyone was talking about here. But if you haven't been to any conferences, this conference is a great resource for getting caught up on the crypto space, government regulations, legacy finance, and how these things are starting to intertwine and intersect. Either way, if any of this interests you, I highly recommend going back and watching the videos for yourself. Do your own research. But I mean, they covered it all. You interested in altcoins or layer one protocols? You had the panel with Anatoly Yakovenko from Solana, Silvio Mikali from Algorand, and Ilya Poloskin from Near Protocol. DeFi more you think? You had a panel with Rebecca Reddick from Ave, Mary Catherine Later from Uniswap, and Liz Matthew from Consensus. You're a Bitcoin maxi. We had Elizabeth Stark from Lightning Labs and Meltem Demiras from CoinShares. And of course, you can't have a crypto conference without some segment for NFTs or gaming in the metaverse. I mean, even sustainability had a time to shine. Now, I know, I know. Maybe you're not that heavy into crypto. Maybe you have more of a corporate background and you're more interested in regulations, traditional finance, VCs, stuff like that. So you can relate more to names like maybe Mike Novogratz and Kathy Wood, uh, Chris John Carlo, AKA Crypto Dad, whoever calls him that, or Kevin O'Leary, AKA Mr. Wonderful himself. Now I could go on and on with the different panelists, the different subject matter experts and the different discussions that were had, but it'll be easier for you to just go to the website that I have linked down below, Crypto Bahamas, click on the agenda so that you can see exactly a breakdown of each day and the schedule and find specifically what section it is that you're interested in so that you could find it in the videos that I have linked below. Now, to the Bahamas and Caribbean focus sections. So, aside from the introduction with Valdez and Prime Minister Davis, I would say that the first Bahamas or Caribbean centric panel was the session Building a National Framework for Web3. And the two speakers that I'm gonna focus here on are Alison Maynard Gibson, the former Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, and Michael Halkidis, the Minister of Economic Affairs. And the key um, points for discussion and, and the key objectives of the, um, of the white paper uh, were to explore new opportunities uh, within the digital asset space, um, to encourage uh, innovation in FinTech and, and other areas of uh, digital assets, to improve the attractiveness of the Bahamas as a destination for other uh, companies involved in, in the digital asset space. We also want to promote um, the development of skills and trainings amongst the population, amongst our professionals, so that they can easily transition uh, from perhaps other segments of the financial services industry into the digital asset space. So the idea is to create that discussion. We recognize that uh, we are a leading jurisdiction in terms of regulation and attractiveness. We want to maintain that, that position, and we believe that we, we do so by encouraging discussion. I think a few things that the government has to, they say don't rest on your laurels, we have to keep it in mind and keep out there. 
One of the things is ease of doing business. We were just speaking a, on the FTX stage about decisions being made on the blockchain in four seconds as opposed to two days. That's the kind of arena we need to keep moving into. I want to also highlight education, education, education. We need to make sure that we have um, a deep bench of people, intellectual capital, national and international in the Bahamas that can continue to innovate and make it very clear that this is the place that welcomes innovation in the technological space. This also means very that we have to also, I think, um, magnify the way that we don't work in silos. We actually are very comfortable with uh, integration of all people who need to be involved in the space coming together. That's how you get the best ideas in any sphere. So not working in silos. We don't solve problems by being in silos. Let's, let's work together. And I think it's important to um, really re make a, a broadband, mobile broadband accessible to everyone. And the same way that we have certain objectives that by certain timelines, we would want certain things to happen in the world. The SDGs, for example, uh, Agenda 2030, we should actually have deadlines by which we will make sure that everybody has access, easy access to mobile broadband. That's essential for Web3. Now, almost right away, we're met with pretty much all six of the themes that I pointed out from the white paper last week. And this is just the first Bahamian focus session of the entire conference. So we had openness, where they discussed the country's openness to new ideas, new investments, new businesses, um, new infrastructure, new legislation, new laws, and just this general openness to, to work and cooperate and collaborate with many of these foreign entities who are all at the same time trying to, trying to figure out this digital asset space. The speed and adaptability was mentioned when they talked about how quickly the Bahamas was able to adapt these new laws and was able to actually bring in the interest of some of these larger crypto and digital asset based companies. The forethought of not just looking at the immediacy of where the space is right now, but actively looking ahead to see what's next, what's to come, and what laws and regulations could best be established to set up for whatever may come in the future. The reputation, where it's more than overly emphasized, we wanna be number one. We wanna be established as the go-to. We wanna be the default choice for digital asset businesses. If a country or a business or some institution is interested in delving into the digital asset space or creating some new structure or new business, new corporation, whatever it is, the Bahamas wants to be the default choice when you think about where to set up. And we can't forget Bahamian accessibility, where we talked about not just making sure that the Bahamian people are educated and employed by the space, even going so far as talking about the access to that mobile broadband internet connection, something that's essential going forward into the future with Web3 and digital assets. So right out the gate, all six themes were hit and that was just the first session. Let's keep going. So the next Bahamas focus session we had was better business in the Bahamas. And this was a stacked panel. So we have Ryan Pinder, the current Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Aaliyah Allen, partner at Graham Thompson Attorneys, Tanya McCartney, CEO and Executive Director of the Financial Services Board, and Chester Cooper, the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Tourism. Give us an overview, just a general overview of the investment policy for digital assets and the tech business and some of the incentives. Well, let me firstly say that when we came to office, uh, the Prime Minister sent a signal to the world that we are open for business. Since then, we have been charting a course to make it easier to do business in the Bahamas. And there, but I think as a country, uh, we were very well placed and we had learned from our history, uh, as the Deputy Prime Minister said, in financial services in which one, we knew the benefit of having to be nimble and having to be reactive to a changing marketplace. Uh, but secondly, we, we understood that the integrity that comes with having a regulated framework 
was actually a very attractive thing uh, for a fast growing industry. And especially for those participants in the industry uh, that were the good players that a country like the Bahamas are looking for to be here and to be part of what we are in the country. Uh, and I think that was very uh, innovative and it certainly was very progressive by the regulator, the Securities Commission of the Bahamas, in order to be able to, to advance that framework and give the comfort to the international environment uh, of, of where we were and where we were heading. And the policy white paper is just in addition to that. Um, when you asked me to describe the environment, the word I used was collaborative. And I would say to you that what differentiates the Bahamas, I believe, from other jurisdictions is this shared commitment by policymakers, the regulators, and the business environment to create an enabling environment where business can thrive and grow. And it is from that space that we saw the digital assets business evolve and become what it is today. Well, as all of the panelists here uh, said the Bahamas has been an IFC of significance um, for many years. Uh, that has been built on the back of an incredibly strong fiduciary toolkit. And it is that toolkit that is serving us extremely well, um, serving our clients extremely well in the digital asset space. We are a jurisdiction that had, as, as has been said, have a lot of experience. Uh, in welcoming businesses to do business within the Bahamas. Um, and, and frankly, I don't think there's another country in the world that has the open dialogue and engagement with senior policymakers. Um, and as, as we develop the regime on a continual basis, um, day in and day out, you know, feedback from those in industry is important as we develop policy. Um, not saying we're going to take all your feedback, but feedback is absolutely uh, important. Uh, you know, it, and, and it, a good example is the white paper that we yeah. released. So again, with the themes already pointed out ahead of time and you already knowing what to look for, and sure, it may just be segments that I'm cutting out. You're more than welcome to go through, um, go back and revisit the video yourself to watch the entire thing. But I mean, the gist of the conversation is based around those core themes. And at this point, it's almost a pattern in the conversations that you see coming from the Bahamian side of the panels. Moving on to day two now. So on day two, the only real Bahamian presence that was felt actually came from Dell Tech Bank, which I believe to be the largest Bahamian private bank. I can't say for sure I'm not a banker and I don't really look up bank stuff, but it's a large Bahamian private bank. First up to bat was Odetta Morton, their CEO. I also think that banks need to understand that um, technology is evolving and everything is moving at lightning speed today, right? Yeah, and thank and you so much for hosting us because I think Deltec Bank is the reason why we're all here, why FTX yeah. is based in the Bahamas. So thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> well, what we're trying to build is a 24-7, 365 platform for our customers because we appreciate that, you know, technology has evolved and the way it has. And obviously we want to integrate crypto in that, in that experience as well. Uh, I think that we've seen all of the big banks um, hesitate as it relates to cryptocurrencies, but uh, definitely behind the scenes, we've seen you know key talent acquisitions of, of persons uh, with crypto experience. We've seen that you know huge investments are being made. So I think that you know while while you know publicly there has been a lot of skepticism uh, behind the scenes, there's been a ton of investments, and I think mass adoption is inevitable. So as you could see, all in all, day two was primarily a banking focused day in terms of the Bahamas. Not much real new information was shared here, but you did get some deeper insight into how banking and the finance industry was approaching or how they viewed the digital asset space and moving into this space as the Bahamas was looking for a new way to attract these kinds of investments. But you tell me though, did you hear any of those six themes throughout their presentations? On a day three, the final and shortest day of the entire conference. Well, modest. <clears throat> so apparently, the third day's footage, there was only one stage on the final day, FTX stage, the main stage. 
and the footage has been taken down by YouTube due to some copyright claims apparently. So unfortunately, I don't have the footage to show you what's going on for this day, but we're still gonna talk about it. So, I mean, in absence of the video, I'll just take it away from the agenda page. So coming down, the first um, Bahamian tailored, I guess I would say, session was right here, how crypto empowers global citizens. Now for this panel, we not only had Dr. Jillian Bethel, who's coming in as the CEO of OKX Bahamas, I'm assuming to be another exchange coming in right behind FTX, but we also have Constance Wang, who was stated here as the COO of FTX. But if you remember from one of my previous videos when I did some digging into FTX Digital Markets, which is the Bahamas-based FTX, then you'll see that she's also the co-CEO of FTX DM or FTX Digital Markets in the Bahamas. So aside from the international FTX COO position, she's the co-CEO for the Bahamas base as well. And then following right up behind her, you see here with global crypto regulation from Latin America to Australia, we have Christina Roll, who's the executive director for the Securities Commission of the Bahamas. And remember in last week's episode, when we broke down the white paper and we emphasized, we saw the emphasis on how important the Securities Commission would be. So in this panel, well, not really just this panel, but throughout this entire conference, we've been seeing bits and pieces of who many of the major players in the digital asset space back home are going to be in coming years. Now I have reached out directly to Crypto Bahamas to see if they'll somehow republish the third day's footage so that it's available for the public to actually sit down and go through to have the complete conference experience. Waiting for a response still, but I'll keep you all updated as it happens. But I mean, overall talks here were pretty much the same. They started with an openness to the idea of considering this new space and this new industry. They moved quickly and acted on it and adapted to it. They ensure that they gave it a lot of forethought to make sure that they could actively protect not just their assets, but the clients, the people that are going to be affected by this as well. Establishing the Bahamas' reputation as the go-to avenue for seeking ventures in the digital asset industry and the accessibility that Bahamians will have to this new blossoming industry as it continues to grow and develop, creating avenues and paths to help grow and foster local expertise on the subject matter. So all in all, I think on the whole, the conference was a success. In terms of them developing a, a forum where there can be a series of discussions covering a wide range of topics under this massive digital assets industry umbrella in the Bahamas, they pulled it off beautifully. Now, if you've read the white paper and you've been keeping up with the industry, there's really not much here for you in this conference other than networking. That's, that's the only thing you really missed, the networking opportunities. But information wise, if you're relatively new, if you don't keep up as much as you would like to, or if you were just interested in delving into a new aspect or a new area of this space, I can't recommend enough going back and rewatching some of this conference. Again, in many cases, I may be oversimplifying things. I mean, I'm trying to keep it down to a, a reasonable time limit. You see where this, you move your mouse or tap on the screen right now and look at this. You see where this is at? You see how much time has passed already? And this is me just brushing on the topics. So it, it, there's a reason it was three days long. I mean, come on people, but you get what I mean. Take the time out, go through the conference. Even if it's not the whole thing, just go back to specific parts that you're interested in or that you'd like to know more about and just sit through it. I mean, the longest one of them was probably like an hour, if that. On average, they're about 30 to 45 minutes. So it's, it's, it's not a lot. And what you'll get from it, amazing. And just a random aside, on the first and second days of the conference, of the streamed conference, for some reason, the final session of each day was cut from the live stream. So on the first day, the final session was Tom Brady and SBF together. And the topic was just winning. Actually, let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. Last one for the day. Winning. SBF 
and Tom Brady. And then on the second day, the final panel was Tony Blair, former prime minister of the UK, and Bill Clinton, former president of the United States, talking about the world today. So I don't know about you, but personally, I would have loved to see Tom Brady and SBF interact with each other on the same stage. He is such an awkward little techie guy. So if you want a good laugh, go back to this panel right here, the one right before Tom Brady and SBF with SBF and Giselle Bunchen, who as you know is Tom Brady's wife. And just watch him interact with these two women on this panel. He 100% fits that stereotypical awkward techie guy. But that's beside the point. I brought these up to say, so those two final ones were cut and I was very interested in the SBF Tom Brady one and the uh, Tony Blair Bill Clinton one. So I took it to Twitter and, and you know, I was just getting off. So I took it upon myself to reach out to Crypto Bahamas. And I asked him, you know, why you keep cutting the stream short? Yesterday, you cut it short with SBF and Tom Brady. Today, you cut it short with SBF. Tony Blair and Bill Clinton. So I'm trying to figure out like y'all hiding something. So I, I'm just joking around. Um, I put the hashtag to hopefully catch someone's attention so I could actually get an answer. Cause I was joking, but I did kind of want to answer cause I wanted to watch those. So I'm up super early Friday morning and I see that I had a tweet <laughs> come from Valdez Russell. <laughs> Clarifying, I guess. Nothing to hide, some sessions were off the record and not able to be streamed online. Hope that you enjoyed the other content. So, nothing to hide, the sessions were just off the record. Why? <laughs> Why were they off the record? Couldn't those, if they needed to be off the record, be handled after the conference. I mean, all of y'all are in the same place. If it's something you don't want publicly talked about, why put it on the public stage and then cut the public feed? I don't know, it's just me, but it was just weird, you know? Like there's nothing to hide, it's just off the record because we don't want people to hear us talking about it, you know? But um, no, like I said, it's just, it's just weird, right? Like it's not just me, right? That's weird, right? Funniest thing about all this to begin with is the fact that Valdez was the frontline response. <laughs> I keep telling y'all, this is the face of crypto in the Bahamas right now. He definitely could end up being one of them faces that you see in the airport when you pull up in the Bahamas, when you pull up in Nassau, LPIA. But what does all of this say about the state of the Bahamas right now in terms of the digital assets industry? If we look back about a year ago, I had written an article about the sand dollar and the Bahamas' ranking as one of the leaders in the future of digital payments. Also referencing a paper written by Aaliyah Allen, uh, one of the panelists that we saw earlier, entitled The Bahamas' Place in a Cryptographic World back in 2018. A few months down the line, I dropped another article highlighting Bitcoin in the Bahamas. Now, mind you, the article is centered around Bitcoin as opposed to any other cryptocurrency or digital asset, but the premise remains the same. It's exploring the future or the possible future of the Bahamas within this industry of digital assets. And then shortly a month after that, in September with the arrival of FTX, I explored what their presence in the Bahamas could mean looking forward into the future with the DARE Act and this newfound interest in this digital assets industry. So if you get a chance, you really wanna dig into some of this stuff, go back and look at those old articles that I wrote and then compare it to where we're at right now and some of the information that you received at Crypto Bahamas today. So all of this was in the span of just one year. And from the looks of things, I don't think anyone in government, in legislation, in the private sector, in banking, or just in general in the digital assets industry is planning on slowing down. So in the coming months, we could expect to see more developments, more news, more updates coming out from this digital assets industry in the Bahamas. And more than likely, it's going to spread and start to grow throughout the rest of the Caribbean region. Now, we know that we have other Caribbean countries that are exploring this space. You have Barbados, 
very open, very willing. You have TNT, very open, very willing. You have progression in Haiti. You have progression in Jamaica. We have all of these different countries approaching the same problem with the Bahamas as we so evidently want leading the pack. So to top it all off, what does all of this stuff mean for the Bahamas? And the short answer to that really is, we can't say for sure. By the numbers, studies, and research done by the experts in this space, they feel very positive about it. But the one thing that we know for sure is that whatever is gonna happen, is gonna be happening very soon, very quickly. But all that being said, thank you again for coming through kicking it with me for another episode of crypto in the caribbean listening to me ramble on about this space that i love so much if you haven't already make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down there subscribe to the gentleman in crypto channel hit the bell for the notifications so you don't miss whenever we drop any of these new episodes i'm just one show on the entire network so if you really want to dig into the crypto space this might be one of the best places for you to start any questions comments concerns leave them down there in the comments below i like to lurk around the comments see what people are talking about i can respond to you there but if that's not enough or if i'm not responsive quick enough because i can't fall off from time to time you can reach me directly at any of these all of that stuff right there so if you want to yell at me if you want to connect if you want to link up any of that good stuff i probably won't link up but you get what i mean you could find me and any of my content right over there all the pleasantries out of the way though let me know what you think did you like the conference did you attend the conference uh were you watching it was there something that you picked up on something that you learned that you didn't know before what were you most excited about what was your favorite panel or your favorite discussion your favorite announcement what drew you to crypto bahamas let us know down there in the comments and remember above all else if there's one thing that you leave from this conference with one key lesson that you should take away from this if you were to forget everything else the one thing that you need to know tell them what it is about this try guava duff till next time though we can link <laughs>